We're Sid and Mackie, and we're professional mountain bikers on a quest to race the best and most challenging mountain bike races around the world. So far, 2024 has been a year with some pretty big changes, most notably a new bike sponsor. About a month ago, we announced that we would be working with Ari Bikes, formerly Fazari, and it was cool to see how many of you were as excited about this change as we are. Today, we're heading up to the Greater Salt Lake City area to visit Ari HQ and get a better idea of what the brand is all about. And we'll be sharing a first look at our new gravel bikes, which are bound to get a lot of miles this year. We are currently in Salt Lake City, yeah. and we get to get a tour of RE headquarters. Very exciting. Very exciting. And they are going to build up our Schaefers, which are our gravel bikes. Which is very exciting because A, we get to kind of go through the process with all the measurements and the setup that they would do for anyone who bought a bike from their website. And we don't have to do it ourselves. Yay! <laughs> Yay. <laughs> for a bunch of reasons, we reached out to Ari about working together this year. First of all, they make a huge variety of bikes. Everything from road and gravel to cross-country trail and enduro mountain bikes, plus a range of e-bikes and even some niche models like this e-fat bike, the Explorer Peak. They're a direct-to-consumer brand, which means that in addition to extremely competitive prices, you get to customize and order your bike online. As part of the ordering process, they ask a bunch of questions, things like height and leg length and riding position, so they can specifically set up a bike for you, doing things like swapping out cranks and adjusting handlebar widths and even setting your suspension pressures to make sure the bike fits you perfectly right from the get-go. And since they offered to build up our Schaefers for us, we decided to go through the measurement process at headquarters. I'm here with Ian. We are at the RE warehouse, or what do you, HQ workshop. HQ showroom yeah. multi-purpose facility, exactly. event center. And we are gonna get some measurements for my Schaefer build, which Tobin is working on right over there. And we're gonna kind of replicate what the consumer would go through on the website, plugging in measurements and getting the bike somewhat custom fit to them. The big important one that's really gonna help us dial in, say, dropper post travel sure. and general sizing is inseam. So I'll have you take cool. just a cut seat tube and hold that to your perineum and we'll get a nice accurate measurement here. 35, that sound about right for you? Probably, yeah. you tone that to about like 34, five sure. with a little yeah. bit of boot. We'll start with the shoulder, just a nice broad open, relaxed stance. You are built like an XC racer. <laughs> I'm gonna do arms, just shoulder to knuckle. Here's what I look at. Torso, once again, kind of belly button to upper sternum. And one thing we usually refer to is someone's riding position. Yeah. We, uh, most will trend towards relaxed when we set up bikes, and that's generally gonna affect stack height, but sure. I assume yeah. you guys are going to opt for something a little bit more aggressive. So Definitely on the mountain bike. I would say the gravel bikes, probably compared to like a road racer, were pretty relaxed. Okay. okay. Anyone who even orders online can dictate, you know, a specific stack sure. preference that they might like, 25 mil under, 10 over. I mean, to most extents, we can do whatever you might like. <laughs> if a customer's looking to be a little bit more guided in that, yeah. they can opt for yeah, a comfort-oriented fit, a bit more of an aggressive fit, and that's that's just an easy option that's on the drop bar there. and kind of helps someone understand where that bike's going to sit for them as far as a upright position. And that's really what I take for that, oh. and what that does end up affecting is just bar width, stem length, dropper post, travel as well as we'll uh, change out when we can crank arm lengths and, and yeah. really just about anything to make that bike as plug and play into your life as possible. So for a mountain bike you would also get someone's weight and Absolutely. set up sag and all of that yes. before they even get the bike. As best as possible. Sure. You know I love to set up sag in person and I think everyone should still check sag rings and see where they're at and, and we have some great videos to kind of see that process and being mm -hmm. able to test that on your own. But yes, we can get so close with just someone's weight as well as that riding position is gonna affect you know your bias of where you hold your weight. Two people in a roughly same body mass, might one might carry their weight much more further forward when descending, one might sit yeah. a little bit more off the back. Once you purchase a bike, um, somebody from our customer success team will reach out to you, um, you know, look at all your measurements and say, here's what we would suggest do you have any personal preferences? Some people like a little bit wider bars. Some people like 
um, you know, a little bit more sweep on their drops. Then we will confirm everything and how we're custom fitting your bike. And then we will go ahead and build it. So in your guys' situation, it looks like we have um, some 44 bars. That's your guys' preference. Um, and so we'll, uh, we'll make sure to throw those on the bike for you. Let's get you measured up as well. Height for you, please. Thank you. Wait when you're geared up and ready for racing. 168. And that against your perineum and let's get a nice accurate inseam measurement. 33. Sid has the, uh, the leg height, I get the torso height. And torso, nice and relaxed. And once again, yeah, aggressive riding position is yeah. a preference. Yeah. When we do that, it does give you all those options to fill out on the website if someone was just buying a bike sight unseen. Mm -hmm. And at the end of that is a note section. And yep. that's that's where we get, I think, some of our best input. Someone could swipe a card and put something in the cart uh, and still want to do carbon bar, mullet setup, like uh, okay. drastic changes. So basically, people should really use those notes. Like people, like if they have requests, if they have ideas, if they have like- It gives us the best chance okay, to set cool. you up in how you want See, it. Like that sort of input is actually greatly appreciated because okay. it just kind of helps guide us to, you know, helping helping for the best experience. Yeah. I went through the process. I like put a bike in the cart and like went through because I wanted to see what all the questions were and stuff. Yes. And like, I didn't realize how important the notes were like that I could really like, hey, here's what I'm looking like. Here are my goals. Here's what I want to like do. And I think that's really neat for people to know. No bike goes out of here without a conversation happening between you and someone on our customer success team to kind of run through at least confirm measurements and, yeah. and sizing and then it's actually the real conversation of what are you using this for? We're, we're going to make sure that this is the right bike for your use case. And we have people that go through that and change to a different bike. I think just a little bit of time speaking with someone that can kind of help guide you in that process if you want that yeah. can really help make sure that you're getting the right product. We were just walking through the uh, assembly line here and we were like, wow, look at that extra small yeah. pink Theo. And we were like, isn't that what yeah. Lowe just ordered? And uh, we looked it up and this is in fact Lowe's bike. She's gonna like this color a lot. Yeah, she's gonna be very <laughs> excited. <laughs> I've been riding this color and it's I love awesome. it. It's awesome. So as we get these in, Builder's gonna unbox it, look for blemishes, things that might not be right from the uh, showroom and kind of get into cursory preview. But then they're also gonna look at all of the measurements and numbers that you, each customer is putting in, and then they're gonna use our sizing charts to effectively gauge what inseam should be, bar width, stem length, and very frequently we're gonna be changing these out based off of shoulder and torso measurements, and we have charts for all of these, mm, so cool. it's actually all kind of plug and play, no real questions, everything has a kind of set standard. Because we've been gathering rider data for so many years, we've been able to kind of have a really good idea what most riders are gonna fall into. So as they move through and uh, build the bike, obviously things come together, things get tuned, shifting comes in. This has had tubeless set up and ready for low. And as they would move forward, then they'll uh, jump onto this. Having that as a quick reference for everyone who's putting hands on bikes and kind of double, triple checking that sort of stuff is really key to making sure the right product goes out. And this is just a, a real quick rundown of what gets touched on every bike before it goes to the next stage, which would be packaging or local pickup. I'd come from other similar online dealers and, and shops that kind of just relied more on mechanic knowledge and hiring people that were, you know, had that ready to go. And we have so many awesome mechanics, yeah. but when you can kind of take the guesswork out of any of that, get that consistency in a long-term setup is really what we're, we're shooting for with every bike going out. Offering that, you know, 30 day love it or return it guarantee puts a lot of weight on us to make sure that this is right. Because if it, yeah. if it shows up and it's not, it, it, so more yeah, than welcome to send yeah. that back. The more standardized and systems we put in place, we find it's just, we're able to identify bottlenecks a little easier, yeah. move past mm -hmm. other production inefficiencies. And it, everything here is so data-based. Yeah. Chris is very, very focused on, show me the numbers, show me why this makes sense. Cool. And this helps us facilitate that. When this is getting built, obviously, you know, adjust the suspension, yeah. bed in the brakes. Yes. If there was, if it was full suspension, there'd be the suspension set up, seat height, stack height, handlebar width, all that. What does it look like when it gets shipped? Bar will come off. So four bolts here, bar okay. gets juxtaposed in, and then we're shipping these in two boxes. So 
wheel box and frame box. Uh -huh. Whenever an option, we try and leave it as together as possible, yeah. but the vast majority are four bolts for stem plate, put that on and wheels on and every other adjustment should be ready. This will be okay. accessory so bag and okay. wheels are pretty sturdy in there. And this is what I ideally see customers coming out, lifting this up, laying it down and that's what nice. you're looking at. So okay. really pretty protected, it's yeah. ready. I'm looking for that out of the box experience where you get to see it, it looks ready and yeah. This doesn't look too scary. And we have video breaking down every single step. In the rare case where it hasn't worked out right, we're FaceTiming people yeah. to walk them through setup. The conversation doesn't stop after it's shipped, yeah. just like it doesn't after you swipe your card. So totally. kind of like the aftermarket support that goes into kind of walking you through this. Cool. But having uh, seen the videos that go with this assembly, mm -hmm. they go through every single piece in a very clear and concise manner. Just notice this, this is great. The Unboxing tutorial, I imagine you scan that. Exactly, it goes Gives right you there. what you're supposed to do and then inflate the fork to yeah. 85 PSI. Uh, we've even kind of brought, tested it with some groups of lesser than, than experienced uh, cyclists and other, and, and people were able to pull this out and get their bike together on their own. This is the best it's been and I think it's only gonna get better. So pretty. You might need to get some some gold decals from Noble to match the gold. I bet you that. that is very pretty. I'm really liking the uh, turquoise and white. Time for a bike check on our new Ari Schaefer's. We'll start with Sid's. This is one of the few times that the two of us are actually riding different sizes. Normally we both ride larges. In this situation, Sid was right on the edge of a large and a medium, and she decided to go medium because she doesn't have a super long torso and she didn't want to be too stretched out. We're running Shimano GRX 12 speed, which I'm really excited about. We've got basically the same range that I had on my two by system on my previous gravel bike, but with no front shifter. And then we're running the Noble CR 45 on the back and the CR 35 on the front. The deeper rear wheel on the back is a little bit stiffer, makes it accelerate really well, it's super fast, feels super snappy. The slightly less deep front wheel gives you a little bit more vibration damping, makes it a little bit smoother on gravel roads. And then we're running Industry 9 Torch Hubs with bird spokes. You guys know we love our bird spokes, it makes the wheels super light also helped with vibration damping. Speedo pedals with the stages power meter on the non-drive side. And then this is something that we've never had before on any of our bikes. This is the Pro Discover gravel handlebar. As you can see, all of the cables, shifter and brake, go in to the bar, come out to connect to the lever, and then go into the headset. So it just makes it look really, really clean. Also running the Pro Discover Post and then Velo Saddles. Sid's running the Senso TT Plus. She has this on all of her bikes and loves it. GRX brakes, running a 160 mil rotor on the front and a 140 on the back. Currently have Maxxis Velocica tires on. So these are basically just slicks. Just have the slicks on because we've been doing a lot of road training. Hopefully we will be doing more gravel riding here in the near future. Here's my Schaefer. As I mentioned, mine is a size large versus Sid's size medium. I'm running the Velo Angel Revo Halo saddle. That's literally the only difference. Besides that, the bikes are identical besides colors. Oh, I guess technically my handlebar tape is a different color also. Both of us are running the Velo Elastic Wrap D2 bar tape. For us, a bike sponsor is about so much more than just the bikes. These are people we will be working with closely, hopefully for years to come, so the relationships are extremely important. The bike industry notoriously has a lot of turnover, which can make maintaining sponsorship relationships challenging. So it means a ton to us to see just how much everyone we met at Ari seemed to enjoy their jobs. And it's easy to see why. With fresh baked bread for lunch. Those are beautiful. They smell amazing too. In an afternoon pickleball tournament. and a 
yes, we got pummeled by CEO Chris Washburn and his wife, Nancy, and it was a little embarrassing. After completely embarrassing ourselves with the pickleball, <laughs> it was still fun, we are off to race go-karts, because that is how, that's how they roll at the RE headquarters. And I have a feeling I, at least, am going to embarrass myself, because usually when I do go-karts, I get stuck against a wall. Apparently, <laughs> it's a three-level go-kart track. So they say. That's what I heard. Yeah. I'm pretty excited. So let's do it. But it's more than just games and a fun work environment. Everyone we talked to, from product designers to shipping managers, was fully invested in making the best possible bikes and giving the customers the best possible experience. We're really excited to be a part of this brand and see what the future has in store for Ari. And now for a little special delivery before we sign off. There's a lot of bikes in here. Well, here's the important yeah. one. <laughs> dum, 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 dum. Here's Lowe's little bike hanging out in the little bike spot. She doesn't know that we took it from Ari <laughs> and we're gonna deliver it to her today. Hopefully as a surprise, but she's probably gonna be confused when they call it or like, we need to refund your shipping fee. She's like, where is my bike? Who has my bike? <laughs> You gave it to Sid and Mackie? <laughs> I hope she's like, I've never heard of them before. <laughs> We're about to go surprise Lo with her bike. She thinks it's not coming for like multiple days because it still needs to be shipped. We have a special what bike coming Special out. delivery! Oh my god. Oh, it's so cute. Did they spoil the surprise or did we? No. Okay, cool. Nobody spoiled the surprise. I have no idea.